Next company, the next company is Amiman. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Dr. Yoav Nissan Cohen, welcome. Thank you. Okay, I named that presentation a uh, content is king. And uh, I guess that anybody in this room that uh, hears that for the first time probably should leave the room and go and look for another industry. So uh, content king, everybody knows, but how will it get to the TV? This is still an open question. There are multiple approaches uh, in the industry and I think it would only be fair to say that uh, the jury is still out about this question. Okay, so I'm Yoav Nissan Cohen. I'm the CEO of uh, Amimon, and Amimon is uh, uh, solving this issue. So I just thought that it would be interesting to see who first said, at least I looked back to try to see who said, first time content is king, and content, uh, this is the first quote that I saw, content is where I expect much of the real money will be made on the internet just as it, just as it was in broadcasting. Uh, any idea who said it and when? Okay, so this is Bill Gates. Maybe somebody said it before him, but this is Bill Gates in 1996. And the interesting point, this presentation that he gave then, he predicted practically everything. He predicted uh, social media, he predicted Netflix, he predicted uh, paying over the internet. Everything that was happening in the last uh, 15 years, he actually predicted, but it didn't happen with Microsoft, it happened with some other companies. This is very interesting. Look it out. Anyway, if you talk about how the content is getting to the TV, this is the old school. The old school, we get content, movies, uh, and they go to the TV uh, either from the set of box or from the uh, DVD. In any case, they go directly uh, to, the, to the TV. This is the old school. What is the new school? New school content we know is everywhere. Okay, we have content in the internet that we can find uh, everywhere, we have movies, we have a uh, content that we have created ourselves, we can create the content, we can store the content on our devices, gaming is a type of content, it's everywhere and it's av available on many, many devices. Okay, so if you look at the devices which uh, content is available today, we can start from smartphones, going to tablets, then uh, notebook, netbook, ultrabook, ebook, anything you want, have content. And the problem with that is the content on these kind of devices, uh, devices have very small screen. And it is not exactly appealing for anybody to watch for a long time, watch content on these uh, small screens. More than that, if you would like to share the content with your family or with your friends, it's, everybody knows this, this, move, this uh, gesture that you take your phone and you put it on somebody somebody's face so he will see the picture of your daughter and uh, this is not exactly the best way to share content. Uh, and we all believe that these uh, devices are actually becoming as efficient as a personal set of box but not efficient for viewing. So of course everybody is looking for the solution for how to get the content from this kind of devices to the TV. So it's, it's clear, I mean, this TV must provide, the TVs must provide connectivity to the mobile devices. This is for easy access to content and also providing the easy user interface that enables you to run any application. And people are looking for solutions and uh, this is no wonder that you can see today smartphones coming up with different type of, of connectors starting from Apple, the 30-pin 30, 30 connector, HDMI, MHL, anything, uh, uh, what have you, uh, to connect these kind of devices to the TV. However, do you really think that this is how we're going to use it? Is, uh, when, is, when is the last time that any of you connected his phone to the TV with a cable? This doesn't really seem, you did it? Well, surprising. And, uh, this is, this is not exactly very appealing. What do you do when you get a phone, when you, when, you, when, when you get a call when the phone is near the TV? Problem. 
Okay, so we all believe the solution for that is wireless. And what, what is wireless? What, what do we require from the wireless to be efficient for this kind of connectivity? So it has to be robust, it has to be high quality that the TV makers will, will agree that it meets their standards. It has to be no latency, because if you have latency, you cannot do any interactive applications, and you're really limited. You can only watch movies, maybe. Long range to connect to different devices at the home. Low power, so it can get into the phones. And very important, it must be a standard, because if it is not a standard, you cannot provide the interoperability between devices. And here I come to, to Amimon, because this is exactly what we are doing. Okay, our, the technology that we have developed is the leading technology today in the world in what we call wireless HDMI capability. Uh, we are providing HDMI quality, uh, cable quality, uncompressed video, uh, full HD. The next chipset will be 2K, 4K. Of course, what we do today is 1080p60, uh, 3D. Latency of less than one millisecond. To remind you, one frame is 16 milliseconds. So this is practically zero latency, covering the home, and power can go down to about 200 milliwatt, so it is a perfect fit for uh, mobile devices. I mentioned the, the issue of uh, standard, and I said without standard, this is not practical. So we actually worked with the leaders of the consumer electronics industry to define the WHDI standard. Uh, six of these companies, LG, Touchy, Sharp, Motorola, Sony, Samsung, and, uh, and, and us, uh, are the promoters, the key promoters that define the standards, but you can find many names uh, already that paid money to become uh, adopters of the, of the technology. Market, we started the market penetration from the TV before it was a standard, so we had products with Sony, with uh, uh, LG, uh, Mitsubishi. We moved to accessories, still point to point before it was a standard, and you can find in the market products from, from Belkin, from Asus, uh, IOData, IOGear, Atlona, and, and some other uh, manufacturers. One minute. From that, we moved to, the, to uh, PC to TV connectivity, and you can find in the market products by Philips, HP, uh, Asus, Galaxy, which is the first uh, video card, a graphics card connecting to the TV uh, electronically. Uh, wirelessly. Uh, what is coming next, what we showed in CES, this is the tablet from Lenovo. This, this uh, tablet, seven inch tablet, that uh, Lenovo demonstrated in CES has wireless technology, WHDI technology inside. And next, what we are planning to bring with our new uh, chipset that will come uh, this year is to be able to go into smartphones. These are a few of the things that people said about us or words that we have received, so maybe I'll just uh, go to the last one. Actually, we won three CES Innovation Awards last uh, CES, and the last quote here, we declare WGI a winner. We hope this will be the case. Okay, I think we should shift into the Q&A. Sure, thank you very much. Thank you. This is exactly. Great. Judges? Let's start with Jacob. Sure. So, as, as you see this, so first of all, congratulations, I think, getting the standards across some of those uh, um, major, major manufacturers was probably the hardest part. Uh, where do you see this going from here? What's the market? Who's the buyer of this moving forward? Is it just going after each device manufacturer and licensing it? How do you see this the company moving forward? Okay, first of all, I didn't mention it. We sell chips. Sell chips. Okay, so okay. this technology cannot work on just software. So you cannot just, you know, send a, a file and you have this technology. You have to buy chips, which is good and bad at the same time. Uh, so, so really, the 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 key so far, most of what we sold are kind of accessories, like HP, Belkin, all these companies are selling accessories that you can take your, let's say, notebook and connect it to the TV uh, wirelessly. But this is not the end game. The end game is if you manage to be embedded inside devices. So a tablet like this, this is what I would like to see more, more and more. And, and once we are able to convince more uh, OEMs to put the technology inside 
their uh, devices, then this will be the, the, the way for, for WHDI standard to become pervasive. Um, okay, first of all, it's a very cool technology. Um, so the question is two parts about smart homes. So IBM really promotes smart of buildings and things like that. So one question would be this proliferation of all sorts of devices inside the homes that will talk to each other and send data and so on. Will you see, will it influence the technology, like the frequencies and things like that? And secondly, which other use cases you would see except for sending video to, to your TV, like watching movies? Uh, okay, so the, the technology is aimed at video. This is a home video network, okay? I mean, of course, the technology itself has many other applications. Uh, we are today the only technology used in hospitals, okay, in, in operating rooms. People are using today uh, connecting a camera, an endoscopic camera that surgeons are using during uh, uh, operation, connecting this camera to monitors, okay? So there are applications, there are, there are many applications. We have many people that come to us from Hollywood, Hollywood producers that, that tell us that the production studio is really outdated because today everything is reality show and in reality show, the, the camera many times is not wired and the director cannot see what the camera uh, man is taking, okay? And they hate it, they want to see what the camera is seeing and for that they need solutions for, for wireless. So we have all kind of this, this kind of other markets that are professional, that, that people are really need for real-time video uh, connectivity, and we are pretty much the only game in town when it comes to real-time uh, 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 connectivity. Uh, at the home, um, could you repeat what you asked about the home? Well, so if you have many devices talking to each other, will it yes. affect the technology, the quality? The oh, yeah, I mean, this is, uh, I mean, the strengths of our technology, what, what we did, we worked with all these companies to define the standard, which enables an environment, en enable a, ne a network. So you, can, you go to the menu of the TV, you see all the available sources at your home, and you connect to the one you want. And you can have multiple channels, you can have multiple devices talking to each other. Uh, you can have one source which is transmitting at the same time to the main TV and to the kitchen TV. So all these issues have been taken care of in the, in the uh, application layer or control layer, protocol layer of the- Let's of jump the to the next two judges so we have uh, time for them to answer, you to answer their questions as well. Uh, you have, um, is the real-time differentiation compelling enough to, to allow you to compete against standard Wi-Fi solutions uh, that are becoming faster and faster on the market and shipping in huge volumes? It's, so, so the question is, um, if you all, all what you want to do is watch movies, then you really don't need to use WHDI. Just for watching movies, when you don't care about, uh, about latency, so you have one device transmitting wirelessly, and you don't care that this is one second latency. Um, you care some cases, by the way, if you, are using v if you are using audio independently, then you have a problem. But if you use the audio of the TV and everything, and you're just watching movies, then there is no, no issue. But more and more, people are interested in all these interactive applications. Okay, in interactive applications, when th there is nothing more annoying than doing like this to move the image and wait for the image to move on the TV. It's really annoying. Once you see that, you, you really fall in love with the technology, that everything is happening in the real time. So I think that, that in a way, the, the Wi-Fi uh, solutions are very good for us because they, will crea they create more and more awareness of, uh, of wireless video. But once people have their hands on a solution, they really want something better. Menashe, you have a question? Yeah, you have. Do, you, do you think that the 60 gig can compete with your application? No, no way. Why? 60 gig is limited in many ways. 60 gig is limited in range. 60 gig cannot penetrate your body. So if you are really standing in between the, the, the um, device and the, the transmitter and receiver. Case. Sorry? This is not a typical case. Well, it, well it's not a typical, it, it is much more typical than what you think because it's enough that somebody is passing in the room, okay? You'll have to train the, your dog to stay at the, go at the corner and not move. This is not really consumer electronics technology, okay? So 60 gig is perfect for some applications. If you're talking about a docking station that is short range and uninterrupted, 
perfect technology. If you're talking about data kiosk, perfect technology. If you're talking about consumer electronics, put it in the home and what is expose the power, it. the power that your solution is consuming? The power that our solution is consuming, first of all, it's the lowest possible to, okay. that today. We can, we can be at about 200 milliwatt for end-to-end -end, uh, in, the, in the mobile handset. If you want to do, let's say, Wi-Fi-based solution, you have, to co you have to compress. If you have to compress, only compression, H.264, will take more power than what our total solution takes. Thank you very much. Thank you, judges. Thank you. The next company is Infinite Memory, Rami Langer. Chief Executive Officer will tell us more about it. Welcome. 